Turn the rotor and check for excessive free play and smoothness of rotation. This check will provide a general idea of the current condition of the bearings. Before removal of any further parts, have a clean, clear area to organize tools and bearing components. Do not remove the new bearings and races until they are ready to be installed. Remove the hub bearing cap using a small chisel and hammer or a cap-specific removal tool. Remove the cotter pin, spindle nut, and washer. Pull forward on the rotor slightly and then push the rotor back into place. This will help free the outer tapered roller bearing so that it can be removed from the spindle. Remove the hub and rotor assembly from the spindle and place on a workbench or flat working surface. Place a piece of wood or rubber mat on the workbench so that the brake rotor facing is not damaged during removal of the bearing races. Clean the grease from the spindle and inspect for corrosion, scoring, and pitting. If there is excessive wear, the spindle may have to be replaced. If the spindle is in good condition, continue with the bearing removal procedure on the hub. Place the rotor with the outer surface facing down. Using a seal removal tool, remove the inner seal from the hub and discard. Remove the inner bearing and place on the bench. Remove all remaining grease inside of the hub unit with paper towels or rags. Using a hammer and a long flat tip punch, align the punch into the small groove that is cast into the hub. Hold the punch firmly against the race and strike with the hammer to remove. Turn the brake rotor over and repeat the procedure for the opposite bearing race. After both bearing races have been removed from the hub, clean the surfaces where the races will be installed. There should be no dirt, excess grease, or corrosion. Remove the new bearings and races from the packaging. Always replace the bearing race, regardless if it looks to be in excellent condition. Tapered roller bearings and races are manufactured as a matched set. Using a bearing race driver tool set, select the correct size tool. Set the race into position, being sure that it is sitting level. Insert the race driver into the bearing race and strike the tool with a hammer until a positive stop is felt and the race is in its proper placement. Turn the brake rotor over and repeat the procedure for opposite race. Grease each bearing. The preferred method is to use a grease packing tool. After each bearing has been greased, set them to the side on a clean surface. Place the brake rotor with the inner surface facing up. Apply a small amount of grease on the race surface with your finger. Position the inner bearing to mate with the bearing race. Align the inner bearing seal so that it is level. Choose the correct sized race driver tool. 
Place the tool squarely on the seal and tap into place until the seal is flush with the hub. Apply a thin layer of grease to the spindle. Apply a thin layer of grease to the outer ray surface with your finger. Install the brake rotor onto the spindle until it stops. Using one hand, hold the rotor into place. Install the outer bearing, washer, and spindle nut. Tighten the spindle nut by hand to hold all parts into place. Select the proper size socket and use a torque wrench to tighten the spindle nut. While turning the brake rotor, torque to vehicle specification, typically 10 to 15 pounds of torque. After tightening the spindle nut, turn the nut loose one notch and align with the hole in the end of the spindle. Insert the cotter pin and install the dust cap. Reassemble the brake system and install the wheel. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for watching.